So, uh, so with that, uh, let me just get started. So we have some conceptual questions that you do on Friday, and I'm continuing to do what I spent extra time uh, going through last time. I, I'm just you know using um, working through these questions with the help of uh, perplexity. And actually, I think when you are working through conceptual questions, this is probably one context where you could use uh, generative AI in an ethical fashion. So um, you've uh, seen the, the discussion that I set up for people to be able to um, cite their use of generative AI, as in if any of your submitted work will contain um, content from generative AI, then you should uh, disclose that use of iSlide resource and uh, you can post a, a post in the thread and um, in the topic and um, tell, tell me and tell everyone what your prompt and the AI response was. And hopefully what you're submitting is not a copy of that. You've uh, made some changes, you've adapted it for your use. So um, here I'm going to uh, yeah, ask all six questions and I will critique the AI's response. Uh, I think last time it did uh, relatively well other than a couple um, things here and there. And, and I will tell you this is a huge improvement from how it was um, last semester. Last semester I wouldn't have recommended two things that do not change over a one cycle of hidden cycle. Uh, I don't know. You are supposed to find it. <laughs> um, uh, two things that do change. <laughs> Skip. Um, so um, yeah. So last semester, I, you know, ChatGPT, I probably wouldn't have even have uh, recommended that as a learning tool because it's so wrong so often, and sometimes the way it's wrong can be difficult to spot. But uh, perplexity has been better. I would. Uh, rate its accuracy uh, above 80 percent. Um, in fact, on multiple choice questions, it usually gets 80 out of uh, 100. So, you know, eight questions are out right out of 10, um, which we'll get to later today. Um, so, okay, uh, hidden cyclical processes because of this arrangement. Yeah, over one cycle is important. So, these two distinctions are really the distinctions about the, what's called the state function. Um, those don't change over one cycle. And things that are not state functions, uh, it's things that do change over one cycle. So let's see, yeah. So internal energy and yeah, state variables, such as pressure, volume, temperature. And one particular state variable that we covered this week is the entropy. And I, I don't know why, um, but for me, um, the, the whole phrase state function, it actually so I don't know why. It personally bothers me. That's why I keep coding when I never say state function. But it's a standard term. I shouldn't be bothered. And one of the phrases you might have heard is on entropy is a state function. Yes, it is. It doesn't depend on how it. it so uh, for a state variable or state function, the changes you see, it only depends on beginning and the end point. It doesn't depend on whatever process it takes. So yeah, this is totally correct. And other than it didn't mention entropy, but that's fine. <laughs> um, two things that do change, and this would be the things that depend on the path taken, and work done and heat transfer are the classic examples. Um, don't know if on the um, model answer I have any more. But work done and heat transfer are the two things that I want you to have. Um, okay, consider an ideal reversible kernel engine. Let me just do copy and paste. I'll see how the figure copied over and then work from there. It looks like the figure didn't copy over at all. So let me, okay, I have to make sure that that gets selected. And so the figure shows, um, and then consider that can be reversed. It pumps are discussed in section, which may or may not mean anything to GPT diagram above um, because, you know, there's nothing on the right. As you know, pair of kernel engines, one operating power connected, it's rather, it's a bit overly complicated question, but I have a feeling it'll probably answer well, um, mainly because um, I imagine this particular question has been asked to, and answered on check. <laughs> so, <laughs> wait, is there? No, check is not one of the sources. Oh. All right, well, let's see. The net effect of the engines and the surrounding can be described as. 
it it somehow mixing up um it was doing this um in physics of 4b sessions um it was kind of remembering it's possible it's because I'm using a one thread for too long. So uh, what I think I'm going to do is let me start a new thread so that my previously asked the question doesn't confuse the AI. Because this obviously has nothing to do with the question that I just asked. Uh, I'm just going to copy and let me start a new thread and just ask. Uh, and hopefully it doesn't... <laughs> keep talking about um, other things yeah uh, he doing scenario okay pair okay okay good good uh, one operating his engine yeah he pump network uh, net effect on the engine surrounding over one second we described as yeah hit engine observes and then work release okay he pump uses the work over one cycle net effect is no network output good the net effect on the surrounding there's no net heat transfer good <laughs> um, so there's nothing happening uh, for ideal uh, heat engine and heat pump um, yeah and th this is a good answer so um, so you know you could answer this really uh, in a short uh, succinct way in by saying oh nothing happens because you are connecting a reversible thing to something that's um, the reverse version of it, and um, they are ideal, so um, so it um, they cancel get they can cancel each other, and this part um, is also important. I might have mentioned something like that in the model answer. So that looks good. Uh, it mentions all the all the important details, uh, which um, you know if, if as you are looking at this question, um, this overly complicated wording of it just confused you and this uh, helps you kind of make sense of the confusing wording with the question, then that's great. That uh, That's the kind of thing that I have no issue with the people having assistance on. Okay, let's keep going. Um, question three, yeah, okay. Let me make sure I edit it down a little. Uh, I lost watch below video and yeah, the links to the external site gone. Uh, and answer below question. Figures all along. Okay, I think it will know to um, kind of ignore these extraneous things. So let me just leave these things in. And what is okay? Let's see. This is another. So I think I wrote some of these questions because your textbook didn't have uh, questions that I thought were interesting to ask, other than this one. Um, and uh, one of the things that. Uh, uh, questions I write tend to be a little bit too long. Um, <laughs> I, uh, so this, I guess, it does it talk about thermoelectric effect? Um, so um, now let me just select the first two, three and then see how that goes. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so the questions I write some too often they tend to be over long and um i think some of them when i could edit them down i did uh, these are over a little long um which you know if this had been a like timed assessment i would have put in more work to edit it down but it's not so <laughs> figure you can spend the time maybe get some help with the generative ai to try to understand the question okay so a in what way could it be described as heat engine can be heat energy because it converts it. heat energy into electrical energy. Yeah, temperature difference between two. Okay, sure. Um, yeah, it, it's good enough. Um, so uh, kind of the working definition of a heat engine would be something that uh, kind of uses a, a flow of heat uh, to, um, to extract mechanical work. And I guess I'm kind of um, bristling against the phrase heat energy because um, heat energy because um, the technical definition of a heat in this class is the the transfer of a thermal energy uh, due to temperature difference and when someone says heat energy uh, i wonder do you really mean thermal energy not heat because uh, whenever you say heat it should it should involve that transfer of energy the wording there didn't make it all that clear um like other yeah you have your heat from hot reservoir and yeah, convert it to mechanical work yeah um 
Okay, part B to part question. How does the continue running when removed from? Continue running because still a temperature, yeah. Because, uh, you know, it's got non-zero specific heat capacity between the two legs of the thing. So there's still that temperature difference. So until that reaches thermal equilibrium, it can uh, extract um, uh, mechanical work in the, the heat transfer. Uh, and the heat and you can start, you can decrease it over time, right? Um, it's heat displaced from the material and that's what yeah, and even if uh, the, so one thing that it didn't mention in this response, even if uh, this uh, device was perfectly insulated from the surrounding, somehow, <laughs> um, as it operates, it actually hit the, the thermal equilibrium will occur between the hot temperature reservoir and the low temperature reservoir. That's kind of one of the things that heat engine does. So I have a, a, a demonstration, a Stirling engine, and I will show that in lab uh, next to it. And with those uh, demonstration engines, one of the things that you have to be careful is the way it's designed. It's supposed to work when the engine is operating. So if you hit the, the hot thermal reservoir without letting the engine run, then you could damage the thing because the hot reservoir will get too hot um, because there's not enough heat transfer into the cold reservoir. Um, without the heat engine working. Okay, uh, question four. The class of sustainment. <laughs> um, and uh, I have, yeah, let me just be silent on the <laughs> class of sustainment. Just, I think it's one of those things that, um, you know, as a physicist, I don't find the class of sustainment all that remarkable, but I think chemists do, so. <laughs> yeah, so thermodynamics is one of those topics that both your chemistry classes and your physics class we both cover and we have different um, duration of the video well, what do you do? Uh, 4 point 39 uh, 4 minutes and 39 seconds um, so chemists have their priorities we have our priorities and even though even though sometimes we might I don't know skip um, <laughs> Even though we might um, cover the essentially the same topic, what we choose to focus on, what we choose to prioritize, it's different. So, you know, in chemistry class, you might focus on trying to figure out is a, a particular chemical reaction going to be spontaneous or not. That I can imagine being important to chemists. For us, really the number one thing that I want you to take away from our coverage of thermodynamics is the heat engines and how heat engine processes work. Like you could uh, have a zero <laughs> uh, chemical reactions and zero phase changes. And if you just understand the operation of a heat engine based on gaseous medium, that's perfectly fine for our purposes. Um, so with that, class your statement, it does not spontaneously from cold hot, okay. Um, and you know, for us physicists, that's, yes, that's so obvious, it's, it doesn't even need to be stated. <laughs> uh, to verify this statement, also for working typical, Evaporator compressor, right? That's what the video will have described. In the evaporator, heat transfer because cold environment, the interior to the working fluid. Um, yeah, we should would mention that the working fluid is colder. Well, let me keep reading. Compressor increases the pressure, and then okay, the condenser heat is rejected into the hotter environment. Right. This question itself is so far good, but it hasn't described how it's consistent with the classical sustainment. Um, or corresponding from hot to cold, and it's yeah, 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 okay. I think it's showing that yeah, from the cold environment to to the so what it's missing is it, it should mention that working fluid is even colder than the cold inside. So even though heat heat is flowing from the cold environment, the direction is still from. Uh, warmer to colder, or cold to even colder. Um, in the condenser, uh, in the back, uh, back of the refrigerator, from the working fluid, which is now warmer than the environment, to the hotter outside, which is at least cooler than the working fluid. Yes, yeah, so I think it's uh, missing some details here. Um, here's it, cold to hot. Uh, yeah, this uh, I wasn't really asking. Uh, the, the question wasn't really focusing on that. Um, yeah, so this particular response isn't all that um, 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 satisfactory, but, I, yeah, it, but it's fine. Let me not dwell on it because the whole thing about classical statement is one of those things. Uh, 
when I first taught this class, I didn't cover it. And I think the uh, main reason I still cover Klaus's statement is because I already have uh, lecture videos recorded. So um, nothing there is wrong. <laughs> so it didn't feel like uh, there was any uh, utility in removing it. But you know, on your part, if uh, all of that gets confusing and wasting your time, feel free to skip it. I won't insist on it. So, okay. For, so for a Carnot engine, uh, the over cycle is zero. And here's actually a, um, so because entropy is a state function, actually for any cyclical process, whether it's a Carnot engine or not, whether it's reversible or not, the entropy change of the system over a cycle is always gonna be zero if it's over a cycle. That's really what uh, it means for something to be a state function. And uh, yeah, for a Carnot engine, is it possible for entropy system to change? If it neither does nor hit during a reversible process, no, I think. Um, you know, reverse. Uh, that so it. This is not what the uh, net entropy change. That's not what the question was asking. Um, yeah, I think it, it, it's confusing B with A because uh, with the B, it's not saying it's necessarily cyclical. Um, so, so this isn't quite right. Um, C, is it possible for it to run on universe? Oh, A, B, C, none of them are really, really possible to hear. Yeah, free A. Uh, I don't like the phrase adiabatic here, but I do think your textbook uses this phrase. Uh, I would just call it free expansion. And I can, I do, can see why they say adiabatic, because in this expansion, there's no heat transfer. Um, but I would like to reserve the term adiabatic to the quasi-static process. Uh, so with that little caveat, which, you know, your textbook uses the term in the same way, so I can't really insist my way too much. Um, yeah, yeah, this is the example the part is had in mind. So part B is a little bit um, iffy, but, and it's the, the part C, it, it, it's good that, uh, that's exactly the answer we had in mind that, in fact, the reference it's giving you might be our text. Oh, it's not our textbook. Never mind. <laughs> okay, last question. And I want to have enough time to do a timed assessment demo. And I'll probably take a little bit of a break because um, after an hour, I do get tired and I do want to have be energetic enough to the to the two problem sets. Uh, here we were saying, okay. Yeah, unique feature. Every other law of physics is reversible, right? Choose to, oh. Uh, um, we're gonna select everything. Uh, quantum mechanics has a thing. Um, in the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics, the uh, what's called a collapse of a wave function, which is not reversible. <laughs> um, but, um, but, you know, collapse of wave function is not a law of nature. So, um, okay, so. Three examples, classical mechanics. You can basically bring up anything. Uh, Newton's law of motion, great. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, oh, they just gave one example, okay. Uh, Newton's law of gravity, new, um, uh, conservation, all the conservation laws, momentum, energy, angular momentum, uh, like you can bring up a bunch of stuff and all of those are reversible with respect to time. Uh, electromagnetism. So we haven't covered this yet. Uh, so if you start to bring this up, I might question where this is coming from. <laughs> but you know, the, all the electromagnetism laws that we'll cover later in the semester, they are time reversible. Um, quantum mechanics, yeah, time evolution, which will which uh, if you take physics four C, you will cover. Um, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't mention the thing about the collapse of wave function, but that's fine. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I think that's good. So, you know, with a question like this, we might ask uh, uh, something like, uh, could you give more examples from classical mechanics? Because uh, you, um, someone who's uh, trying to use this to learn might have realized that we haven't covered electromagnetism and quantum mechanics, so those examples make especially less sense. But you have covered the classical mechanics in physics 4A, 
So the examples there, you can read through and kind of reason through for yourself and see that, oh yeah, all of that makes sense. Um, uh, what it's claiming makes sense. Now, simple harmonic motion is not a law of nature. Um, and I don't know in what sense they are saying it's time reversible. Because if you reverse time, the way it's moving is looks different. So the, the, the equation of motion is definitely... Um, Definitely time reversible because uh, it comes from Newton's second law, which is reversible with respect to time. Um, yeah, yeah, still follow. Yeah, okay, that, that's, I guess, good explanation. Yeah, good. Okay, so that's the conceptual questions and kind of looking at it with the help of generative AI. And uh, yeah, some of these overly long questions, it, it has, but I, I think overall it's still doing well. So. Um, again, if and when you are using these tools, make sure you are using it to learn, not cut corners.